Hi, my name is Eric Nieves. I'm a technical manager and a senior support engineer for a robotics company. And what we have here is a demonstration of two robots working together to race against me and tracing out that pattern. Let's see how we do. I lost again. I love robots. Robots are a lot of fun. Every day, uh, I enjoy coming to work because uh, robots are always new. Nobody buys a robot uh, to just be a plant stand. They're always taking this arm and doing some function with it. So I get to see how other people apply robot technology, and that's different every single day. Today, after 15 years, I consider myself to be a robotics engineer. Not an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer, but a robotics engineer. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, robotics engineering is a bit more general. It starts with the problem the customer or the user needs to solve. They need to make 150,000 of these widgets per year. And as a robotics engineer, I can look at that and say, okay, that's going to require that the mechanical engineer do this for the system and the electrical engineer is going to have to solve this problem uh, to tie it into the uh, factory's network. Uh, now I may not be able to de design the intricacies of the particular gripper but as a robotics engineer I can say functionally what that gripper is going to need to do. Robotics is used in industry today to take over work that we classify as the three D's of robotics. Dirty, dangerous, or degrading to the human spirit. We want to be able to implement robots and automation technology to take over those tasks that people don't want to or really shouldn't do. Some of the things that uh, robots are used for today, uh, arc welding is a big part of uh, robotics. Uh, and that's work that's dirty and it's dangerous. There's a lot of arc flash, it's hard on your eyes, uh, there's a lot of fumes, it's not good for your lungs, so it's important to try to have automation take over some of that work, and robotics is a big part of that. Uh, another is grinding, sanding, buffing. Uh, that's dirty work, that powder gets in your face and everywhere, and you, uh, you breathe it. Uh, and the other is uh, palletizing. There's a lot of robots being used to stack boxes where before folks had to stack one box on top of another on top of another. We all know about back injuries and carpal tunnel syndrome, and those are, are, are real hazards, but the biggest one is just, uh, it's degrading. You know, there has to be a better way than to make a living than just stacking boxes on top of each other. So let's use robots to do those kinds of tasks and free up people to do work where they can uh, use their mind and their creativity. What's exciting about working in robotics is when you start out with that problem. When the customer says, I need to uh, automate this process, please help us. And we start out with paper and we throw out a lot of paper. And then we come up with some concept that may be completely different than how it's done today. And we will start bringing components together and we will go through a mechanical engineering process and we'll have the electrical guys work with the mechanical guys to make sure that we're not working at cross purposes and then we build something on the floor and in that process from paper to working cell okay, there's a gotcha there's an oops there's some piece of information that maybe we didn't know or we overlooked and now that we're building something we have to react you typically know when you've got an oops uh, when you've programmed the robot for the first time and it goes out in space and it crashes. Okay? It hits uh, a fixture or it crashes into the floor and you scratch your head and say, what happened here? Then you go back and you look and you say, was it the mechanical side? No. Was it something in the controls? Possibly. And we start uh, troubleshooting the system and then we find, aha, that's where the problem is. And being able to solve problems uh, very quickly uh, is essential uh, in uh, this industry. Uh, and that's a lot of fun.
Uh, being able to diagnose and say, I found the problem and I've got a fix for you. Robotics is a very cross-functional industry. W what that means is we require a lot of different engineering disciplines to put a robot system together. You're going to have a mechanical component, meaning the arm itself and how it has to move whatever it is that you're having to uh, move in space. You're going to have a controls component. How does this robot tie into the uh, commanding computer that's responsible for running uh, that particular work cell? Uh, there is an electrical component, uh, having to bring power to that robot, distributing that power amongst all of the different components in the cell that require electrical energy. And while all of these disciplines have to come together, they really are individual tasks that need to be completed. So the electrical engineer is going to have a very specific set of problems he needs to solve that only he can. The mechanical engineer is not going to be able to solve the electrical uh, power questions. The controls engineer can't solve the mechanical problems. So each one of them is going to uh, solve their problems. Their engineering discipline will uh, enable them to do so. And then all of that's going to come together and we're going to call that a robot. The most important classes that I took in high school uh, that prepared me towards work in robotics were trigonometry. Geometry is very important in robotics. Robots are essentially machines that move. They move in space, and those motions are described in the language of geometry. So I use geometry terms every day. Uh, another was physics classes. Uh, algebra classes uh, were also significant. But I think it's important to understand that English composition is a big part of our job. And I spent a lot of time writing, and uh, those high school classes were essential. Me encanta la robotica. That's Spanish for I love robots. Okay. Uh, one of the best things to have happened to me professionally is my ability to speak two languages. And I encourage you in high school and college to study a second language. Uh, it's essential in this industry. Uh, the world is getting smaller but enterprise and industry are getting smaller faster. So anytime that you can bring a second language with you as a skill, uh, then your employer is getting two employees for the price of one. And that's been invaluable to me professionally. In high school, I was part of the drama club. Okay. And I wasn't on the acting side, no talent there. Uh, I was on the lighting and, you know, techie side. Uh, and that, to me, really taught me a lot. Uh, it taught me about teamwork. We all had to work together to have this come off. But more importantly, there is no deadline quite like Showtime. Okay? So it really helped me to understand that we have to work together to get something to come off in a timely fashion. So anything you can do in high school that fa facilitates teamwork is worth doing. College classes that were really important for me. Probably the most important was a linear algebra class. Because robots, what they do to make these uh, motions and arcs in space is they solve linear algebra problems all the time. That's what robot controllers do. And when robots don't behave correctly, you need to go back and look at your linear algebra. Other classes that were important to me in college uh, were my physics classes, statics and dynamics. Uh, that's where I learned about friction. Uh, torque, inertia, leverage, a lot of the mechanical properties that make up industrial robots today. Uh, my background came from my physics classes. In a day in robotics, you're going to use what you've learned in college to compute masses, to determine velocities, to calculate safe distances, to measure torque and inertia. All of these are going to tie back to what you learned during school. And many of the things that you're going to learn in college, you're going to be exposed to and start to understand uh, when you take those first courses in high school. If I could give some advice uh, to youngsters that are interested in robotics, it's uh, pay attention to math class. You're going to have to have it for the work. You're going to have to have it to get into a good engineering school. 
And the other is, start playing with robots now. There's all kinds of options for you out there. Uh, there's uh, robot building clubs in just about every uh, city in America. Schools are interested in robotics. There's uh, clubs that are forming nationally. And, uh, you should be able to find some place where you can begin building and uh, programming robots, even on a miniature scale today. The future of robotics uh, is in play right now. Uh, we're starting to see robots sort of divide into two separate fields, industrial robots and service robots, where uh, industrial robots is fairly mature. You've got uh, engineering disciplines out there and, and coursework that will lead you down the road of industrial robotics and give you all the skills that you need for that. Tomorrow's robots are different. The robots that are coming out now are going to have sight. They're going to have vision systems and cameras to tell them where they are in space. They're going to have a sense of touch. They're going to have uh, an ability to make sure that they're not interfering uh, with obstacles in their path. Uh, there's all kinds of sensory technologies that are being incorporated into robots uh, that's really going to be the robot of tomorrow. La robótica se encuentra hoy. Es cierto, pero el futuro de la robótica es sin límite.